This video will introduce you to some important concepts that you should know when you're getting started working with digital art in Pixelmator Pro. So what is Pixelmator Pro? Well, it's an application that's basically like a simplified version of Photoshop and it's only for the Mac. And it enables you to create digital paintings from scratch or to modify existing photographs and other digital images. The tools in Pixelmator Pro will enable you to express yourself in new ways. You will be able to reach for the stars. The sky is the limit with Pixelmator Pro. It may even transform your life. So how is this possible, you ask? How does this amazing application work? Well, most of the time, you're going to be selecting certain pixels and then telling Pixelmator Pro how you want to change the colors of the ones that you just chose. As you know, your screen displays images using little tiny squares called pixels. And the type of digital imaging tools that work in this way are called bitmap or raster tools. And what they do is they change the color of the individual pixels. There's another type also called vector, and those tools use mathematical formulas to create paths that connect points to each other. One application that's well known that primarily uses vector-based tools is Adobe Illustrator. And much like Adobe Photoshop, Pixelmator Pro is primarily raster-based, but it also has some vector-based tools as well. So if you're wondering about the differences between Photoshop and Pixelmator Pro, hopefully this chart will help to explain. When you think about complexity, Pixelmator Pro is simpler, whereas Photoshop is more complicated. Pixelmator Pro is pretty lightweight. It doesn't require a lot of hard drive space or power from your computer, but Photoshop takes up a lot of space and requires a lot of power to run. So Pixelmator Pro is recommended for people who have maybe a little digital art and design experience, whereas Photoshop is better for more advanced designers and people who are doing this for a living. Okay, so you're ready to get started. You wanna select some pixels and change their color. So how can you tell which pixels you've selected? Well, you'll be able to see kind of a dotted line surrounding your selected pixels. And the little dots flash on and off some people say that it kind of looks like a row of marching ants. And when you're done with that part of your design, you can make the marching ants disappear by clicking Command D, which is deselect. And if you notice that some parts of your image have this kind of gray and white checkerboard pattern, that's Pixelmator Pro's way of telling you that currently that area is transparent. You don't have any colored pixels in that part. The checkerboard's not actually part of your image, so if you were to export it or print it, you wouldn't see them anymore, it would just be clear or white. So when you're working with raster-based tools and changing the color of pixels in an image, it's important to understand the concept of resolution. You might hear terms like high res or low res. So if an image is high resolution, that means it's really clear and it looks crisp and sharp and detailed. And if it's low res, low resolution, it's a little fuzzy, a little blurry, maybe kind of pixelated, and it does not look as good. Generally speaking, the more pixels an image contains, the clearer and sharper it looks. Image resolution is measured in PPI, which stands for pixels per inch. And this comes into play when you are going to be printing something and it has to do with how many pixels are in each inch of your printed image. But for when you're working with images on screen, the most important measurement is the dimensions of your image in pixels. At some point, you might also come across the term DPI, and that's dots per inch, which has to do with how many drops of ink are used by a printer. This graphic shows the difference between an image that's 10 ppi versus 20 ppi. You can see that the curves look much more curved and it's easier to tell that it's meant to be a circle. The standard resolution for printed images is 300 pixels per inch. 
When working with digital images, it's important to always start with a large high resolution image. Even if maybe down the road you think that you're going to want to make it smaller, it's better just to start with high quality. So when you go to create a new file in Pixelmator Pro, the default size is a great option. A4 is good too if you think you're going to be printing it. It'll automatically set your resolution at 300 ppi. And later, if you want to make a smaller version of it, it's very easy to do that. Say it's going on a website and you want it to load quickly. That's always possible, but you can't go the other direction. By making a small image bigger, it won't improve the quality. Here's an example of a very small, low resolution image. You can look at the dimensions in pixels and it's only 20 by 24. But if you want your image to look good, you need to have thousands of pixels to work with. So you need to start off with either a high quality, large, say default size Pixelmator file, if you're working from scratch, or a high resolution photograph that you took by yourself. And sometimes you might need to get images from the web in that case, you need to be careful because it's pretty easy to accidentally start working from a small thumbnail and then it's going to not look good in the end. So the way to avoid that is to pay careful attention to the dimensions in pixels of the images that you're considering using. You want to look for large files. So in a Google Images search, if you hover over the thumbnail, you will see the pixel dimensions of the full-size image. And then when you click on it, it'll bring up a larger preview thumbnail. So be careful not to just use the small thumbnail as the picture because the dimensions that you see are for the full image that you get when you click on it, not for the thumbnail itself. So you can go through your search results and hover over each thumbnail to check out the dimensions and then kind of decide from there. But there is a way that's faster and more efficient and it involves filtering your results. If you click on the button that says Tools at the top and then go to where it says Size, the drop-down menu has some options. If you choose Large, it will filter your results and only show you large images. But you still need to be careful because the little preview thumbnails are not the actual large image. You still need to go to the source page to get the full-size image. So try to get into the habit of always doing that. Layers are another important concept to understand. You generally would want to have each part of your design on its own separate layer. And that will give you a lot of flexibility and make it very easy to make changes later if you need to. You can think of layers as kind of clear sheets of glass that are stacked on top of each other. And whatever you put on the top layer could potentially hide whatever is below it if they overlap. But you can easily change the order of the layers just by dragging and dropping. Another really cool thing that you can do with layers is you can adjust the opacity. In other words, you can make layers transparent, translucent, opaque, anywhere along that spectrum just by dragging the slider at the bottom. And if you don't want to accidentally start painting on the background layer or move it by accident, click on it when you don't mean to, you can lock it by clicking on the little lock icon and you can unlock it the same way. You can also hide a layer by clicking on the little eye eyeball icon next to the lock, and you can always bring that back again by clicking on it once more. This graphic might help you kind of visualize what it might look like when you're working on a new design and you have different things on different layers. So of course you're going to want to save your work by doing a command S or a file save. And when you do that, it's automatically going to save your design as a PXD file, Pixelmator document. And that file has all of the information about what's on each layer. It has everything separated, which is great because let's say you made a typo or you have another small mistake that you want to be able to fix. With your layers separate, it's super easy to do that. However, PXD files are not in a format that's good for sharing or publishing on the web. So while you should save your image in this format, you probably are also going to want to export it so that you can share it in a more standard image file format. One option that's very common is the JPEG. The advantage of JPEG is that it's compressed, which makes your file size quite small, and that means that it will load quickly on a website. 
The downside is that in order to reduce the file size, a lot of the detail gets lost and the quality of the image is lower. Another thing to keep in mind is that JPEGs do not support transparency. So if you have areas of your image that you want to keep clear, JPEG will turn those to white. A universally supported file format that does support transparency is PNG. So you can keep those areas clear if you want. That doesn't mean that every PNG has a transparent background, but it's possible to have that as an option. PNG files are bigger than JPEG files though, because they don't reduce the quality. There's also a new file type, HEIF or HEIC. That format is very efficient at keeping quality while reducing the file size. The downside is it's still really new and it's not universally accepted yet on the web. So what's the best format to use? I would recommend that you save one copy as a Pixelmator document in case you want to make changes later and that you also export as a PNG because that's a great option for pretty much any purpose. So you may be thinking, why bother exporting? Can't I just take a screenshot? Actually, yeah, that is an option, but there are some downsides to keep in mind. One thing is that any transparent areas will look like that gray and white checkerboard. Also, if you have any selections that are active, you will see the dotted line, the marching ants. Also, the quality of the image is not as high as it would be if you exported it as a PNG file. This is the same image saved as a screenshot and as a PNG file. If you look at the file size, we've got 718 kilobytes for the screenshot versus 1.2 megabytes for the PNG file. And it's not really super noticeable, but if you zoom in, you can see a difference in quality. Now that you know the basics, you can go ahead and get started. I feel confident that, like me, you too will fall in love with Pixelmator Pro. Too bad I can't elope with it. Boom.